Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make copper benzoate. For this you are going to need sodium benzoate, copper 2 sulfate and also distilled water. 15.9 grams of copper sulfate and 28.82 grams of sodium benzoate were weighed out in advance. Copper sulfate was then dumped into a beaker. Enough distilled water to dissolve all of the copper sulfate has to be added. While the copper sulfate is still dissolving, we take a second beaker. To this beaker we transfer our sodium benzoate. Again enough distilled water to dissolve all of the sodium benzoate is added. When both of the chemicals have completely dissolved we take the beaker with the sodium benzoate solution and slowly added to the copper sulfate. A double displacement reaction is taking place. Copper benzoate has a pale blue color. To make sure that the reaction is complete, we let all of this mix for 5 more minutes. After 5 minutes, a vacuum filtration was performed. With the small filtration funnel and a really bad vacuum pump that you were able to see in the last video, all of this filtration was really a pain in the ass. Even though it wasn't fun, in the end we got everything finished. If you want, you can directly scrape the product onto a piece of paper. However, the product is still heavily contaminated with sodium sulfate. For further purification, you can directly transfer all of the stuff to a second beaker as we are going to do soon. Have a look at our crude product. I have to say that this product looks really interesting for a copper salt. I wanted to purify this product even further and therefore I transferred all of it to a clean new beaker. Approximately 200 milliliters of distilled water were added. We put the beaker on top of a hot plate and stir up everything using a glass stirrer. The copper benzoate formed quite interesting patterns while being heated. A second vacuum filtration was performed while everything was still hot. Our goal here is to get rid of as much of the sodium sulfate that was formed in this reaction. Sodium sulfate is more soluble in hot water than in cold water. Therefore the filtration is way more effective when our solution is still hot. The product was washed twice using distilled water. Because I am lazy and didn't want to wait for 30 minutes or whatever for our product to try, I washed twice using 99% isopropanol.
for drying. The copper benzoate, still containing some isopropanol, was again transferred to a piece of paper. It was spread out to maximize the surface area. While still waiting for our product to dry, I performed a flame test with our unpurified copper benzoate and also with our purified copper benzoate. You can see that the flame test reveals that our unpurified sodium benzoate still contains a lot of sodium. After cleaning our spatula, we performed the flame test with our purified copper benzoate. You can see that the color is distinctively green. The green color signals the presence of copper. The now dry purified powder was then scraped into a big pile. Afterwards it was transferred to an appropriately labeled bag. In the end we got 18.5 grams of copper benzoate which corresponds to a yield of 60.5%. If you like this video feel free to give me one of these and consider subscribing to my channel for more stuff like this in the future. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time, bye.